All right, welcome back to the show. It is Christine Jewell, and we are here, and we are breaking chains. This show today is really inspired by my heart. I was I was on a run. I've been having a lot of really deep, deep conversations, like deep conversations um, with men and women, a lot of men that have been reaching out that are really at this crossroads, where they just feel so alone and hitting that place where here's some things I've heard. You know what? I just wish I could burn it all down and start over. There's so much pressure from the outside. Some going through legal battles, some going through employee battles, some going to through just massive, massive, massive contractions in their business, dips, valleys that feel so deep that there's no way that they can get out of it. And it's not just one. There's been a handful or, or so lately. And Often I will say, you know, we are in this, I believe we're in a divine reconstruction, a reorganization, and God is setting things back in the right order. And he's calling up an army of men and women who are going to be the ones, the warriors that go up front and break free from these bonds, um, these bonds of bondage, right? These chains of bondage, of slavery to debt, to, you know, financial slavery, emotional slavery mental slavery, being a, a captive to the thoughts that are just incessant coming on in your head, being captive to businesses or business structures that we've built that now we can't seem to get any oxygen or come out from, being captive and in bondage to whether it's alcoholism or spending or, you know, habits that we've got that we just can't seem to shake. Sometimes it's generational stuff. Always it's generational when we start looking back. You know, there's a lineage, there's a family history, a spirit of poverty that has come, a spirit of destruction that wants to come in and just you rob, kill, and destroy. There's and we are called to be the change makers. We are called to be the ones that shift the game that starts to say, you know what? It starts with me. It starts with me, my children, my family. We're going to do things different. And so today I'm coming to you with a big old heart. You know, my heart is just really crying out as I hear, hear these cries. And I just wanted to hopefully drop some inspiration, shed some light to some of you who maybe are in a dark place right now, or maybe you know someone who's in a dark place. And I want you to listen, even though it may not totally apply to you, because you've either been there or you're going to be there at some day, at some point. And it is so important to remember. So again, I've, I've had some calls coming in lately with, with men that have just hit a point after building, building, building for years, pouring their heart, blood, sweat, tears, lifeblood into their businesses. And it's like, it's eating them alive from the inside out, right? The culture has shifted. There's massive division, dissension, lawsuits are coming down. Um, cash flow has stopped. And it's like the oxygen has just whew, come right out from them. And the things that I'm hearing is if I didn't have a family, I mean, I had somebody tell me the other day, if I didn't have a family, I would be done. I would be checking out of this life. I would be done. I just like, I don't even want to be alive anymore. I've heard that not from one person, but from several people in the last several weeks. I've heard, I just want to burn this all down. I want to run away. If I didn't have kids waiting for me at home, I would just get in the car and drive and never come back. Whew, that's intense. And the amount of pressure, and those are just some, um, I want to hide under a rock and never come out. I want to go into a cave and never come out. You know, these are just some of the things that I've heard. And my heart is just crying out because on one hand, I know that feeling. I know exactly what it's like to be in the fetal position on the ground laying in a pool of, of blood, sweat, and tears with every single thing in my body feeling like it was on fire and literally wanting to light a match to everything in my life. I know that feeling, a feeling like I have been completely abandoned, forsaken, left out in the wilderness to die. Like there was no way I could not see the light in those moments. And so I'm on the other side. I'm, I'm way on the other side of, of having gone through that not just once, not twice, but multiple times in my life. And I just want to offer a word of encouragement for those of you listening that have been totally broadsided, that you were driving strong and fast in one direction. You had plans. You had the vision. You had the direction. You knew what was happening. You knew what you were going to make happen. You had plans for how your business was going to go. Like your foot was all the way down on the gas 
and all of a sudden, maybe somebody's come in there and just ripped the rug out from under you. Somebody has come in and like kicked you out of the driver's seat and said, uh, you don't, you don't belong here anymore. Right. I've heard multiple different variations, multiple different variations of very similar stories where it feels like there's a noose to your neck, a gun to your head. And what do you do in these moments? And so I want to share something that I shared with someone else on voice note, you know, somebody, I sent a message to somebody, but I really want to remember all of us that we are not, you are not your business. You are not your company. You are not your brand, right? You are not the title that you have, especially, I mean, I see this with the men and women. I see this with women too, but anyone who's operating really in a masculine space by the worldly ways, we get really entangled and we get really enmeshed. Our identity gets confused and we start thinking, if I don't have this business, if I don't have this company, if I'm not the one running it, then I'm done for. Like I have nothing to live for. Like, do you understand the depth of that statement? If I don't have this then I have nothing to live for, I want you to think about, is there something in your life that is that deep for you that if, if you don't have that, you literally would say, I, I don't have anything to live for. Consciously, we know when we're not in that space, like, of course, I have my kids, I have my family, but we don't realize how strong of a stronghold we allow these things, these entities, which is what a business is. It's an entity. It's right. It's, it's an entity of its own. And we get confused and we allow that entity to become our entity. And we forget that we are so much more than just a business. Business is something, is something that you build. It's something that you nurture. It's something that you have to reorganize. You have to prune way back at times, right? It has to be a separate thing from you. And the minute you start seeing it as an ex just a whole extension of you, it is like, you might as well just, you know, start sawing off arms and legs. It's that painful. And so of course we put our heart, we put our soul into this. We, we put our heart and soul into our people. But I really want to start by saying, like, you have to see it as a separate thing. It's a mission. It's not who you are. And for some of you, you know, again, that business is your mission. Like the, the work that Mark and I do in our business, like it's our mission. It's our God given calling the work that we're doing, right? This we're doing it through this vehicle, through this vessel right now that is called Thrive Today, that is called Warriors of the Heart, that is called Gravitas. Those are the different names of our companies, the entities, but they're vehicles. There are ways that God allows us to show up and do the work. If he decides to change gears or he's calling us into a new path, the vehicle, the container may change. It may evolve. This is why we can fall so in love with our thing that we've built or the, the vehicle that we're using that we forget we're not that, right? And it could change. It can shift over time. The other thing I want to say here is you are not the role or the title that you have. One of the biggest things is this fear of failure, this fear of what will people think? How will I show my face in public if I have to like this thing goes belly up or I go belly up, right? And it's, it's really humbling because, you know, a lot of you listening, some of you listening, you've built up a lot of stuff around you, right? There's a lot of things like depending on you to show up and pay the bills and whatever. And there's a great amount of shame that we hold on to that if, what if I'm not the one that can be the provider for that anymore? If all of a sudden I lose the car, if I lose the house, if I lose, you know, the building, the, the building with my face on it, with my, my name, you know, that, that big shiny object that everybody knew me as that was a status symbol, that thing that everybody drives by and says, Oh yeah, you know what, Christine, that's her thing. You know, um, we are not our stuff. And I did an episode a while back on, your identity, who you are and who you're not. But in these moments where we are just so under pressure and we're just in this moment feeling like we're about to lose it all, it feels like it's all slipping through our hands. Could be your marriage. It could be one of your children. I've had this feeling in my marriage in my life. I've been through a horrible divorce and a complete rebuilding. You guys can go back and listen to those stories. 
thinking like, oh my gosh, you know, I don't even know how to function on my own right now in this moment. Like I feel so lost in relationship. Who am I? I have gone through seasons where literally you guys, I've, I've shared this on the show. I felt like I completely lost my children. Um, and it was terrifying. It was terrifying. It was terrifying. But every single one of those seasons I have come out of and out of those ashes, God has made something completely beautiful, completely restored. He has refined. He has strengthened. He has rebuilt in me and through me, you know, something even more beautiful than was present before. And so I just, you know, wanted to drop in today, not to do a huge long episode, but I don't know who needs to hear this message. And this wasn't really my plan. I was going to do something different on like seven business lessons that I've learned recently. But I think that there's a lot of people right now feeling an immense amount of pressure, the pressure to perform, the pressure to provide, the fear of failure, barely holding on like by one finger on a cliff where it feels like you're about to just fall off into never, never land. And, you know, the canyon is so deep and you have no clue what's in the bottom. And it's terrifying to look at the people around you, whether they're your staff, whether they're your family members, your children, and be like, oh my God, how am I, how am I going to provide for my kids? How am I going to get us out of this? How am I going to be able to move forward? And here's what I have to offer. At least in my own life, I know that feeling. I just want you to know, like, I know that feeling. Like I've said, I've been there when I was 17 and we lost our house. I thought, I thought I I had my whole life planned out. You know, I was going to go to FSU. I was going to go live in a big city. I was going to start study advertising. And we had our roommate. I had the whole plan. And then boom, just like that, you know, we lost our house. My father disappeared. It was just like a total redirect. My everything that I was looking forward to, everything that I thought I was going to do shifted in an instant. And it happened again in my divorce when I was 30. And it happened again when I closed down the business that I built after 10 years. It just happened again and again. And here's what I want to say is that every time I thought, oh my gosh, it's the end of my life. And I want to say that I have been on the bathroom floor saying that out, which I'm so glad that I didn't go (laughs) exit this life. I am so glad that in those moments where I was just like, I just don't want to live anymore. You know, and I had those dark, dark moments that something bigger than me was in the room, that God was in the room holding me. And he was like, I am not leaving you here. This is not the end of your story. Actually, baby, this is just a stepping stone for what I'm about to do because the thing I'm about to take you into is actually preparation for the next thing and the next thing. And now as we look back and I look back over four decades, right? Four decades, three and a half decades of of going through this process. I can see, you know, looking backwards, it's so much easier to see what's, what's been going on, right? I can see that each phase, each kind of like, breakdown for the next breakthrough for the next leap was was a massive evolution in my character it was a massive stepping stone into the next season the next thing that god had for me like literally the next body of work the next skills he was refining me the next level of character and depth he was doing in me and like i said every season every time was just another stacking and a stepping stone to get me to where I am today. Like I would not be doing the work I'm doing. I would not be married to the man I'm married to. I would not live where I'm living. I'm like, none of this would exist if I hadn't gone through the path that I went through. Was it easy? No. I think sometimes we, we look at, not sometimes, always, we look at these things. And I'm guilty of this too. You know, we put up the beautiful moments on social media. And, oh, like my blessed, beautiful life. You know, we have this beautiful home. We have this beautiful marriage and we do, and we are abundantly blessed. And I am so, so, so grateful. And, and I do have an incredible amount of joy in my life. And I do have an incredible amount of peace. And we have six beautiful kids and we do work. That's amazing. But you know, there's been many, many, many times where in the same day that I was having wild success, you know, just hours before that I was in the fetal position, you know, crying or like in the sauna crying or in the woods crying, like, I don't know what I'm doing. And so I think that we really need to give some perspective here that when we're looking outside of us, 
at the world outside and we're seeing everybody else's success and everybody else's journey, you know, they always say, don't gauge your, your starting point to someone else's, you know, three decades in. We look at somebody on social, or we look at somebody driving a car, or we look at somebody running a business and we're like, man, they've got it all together. But we have no clue, A, everything they had to go through in their lifetime to get them to the point that they are today with the level of conviction, the level of courage, the level of faith, the level of strength to be able to say no. I mean, that alone takes decades, I think, to refine, to have that character that is so clear on what you're saying yes to and no to. Like, that just doesn't happen by snapping your fingers. That is a process that is embedded and ingrained over time as you go through trials. We don't see also what is going on behind closed doors when they go home. What kind of marriage do they have? What kind of wrestling do they do in the background? Right? We, we only see what we see. And so I just felt like I wanted to drop in here today as a word of encouragement. Maybe this is you. You have an area of your life. Maybe it's your relationship. Maybe there's something going on in your health where you just feel like the whole thing is just burning down. You just can't seem to, to get beyond it. Maybe you're hanging on by a thread in your business. And I just want to just drop in and encourage you. And I know I keep saying that because that's really what I feel is that this is not the end. It is a stepping stone. This is the beginning of a new thing. This is the beginning of a new chapter. This is the beginning of a brand new identity that is emerging in you, right? A brand new woman, a brand new man that has got to be the brand new man for the new thing that God is going to do in your life, the new business, the new vision, the new body of work, the new way of structuring your business, the new way that you're going to be managing finances, the new way that you're going to lead your family requires this new version of you. And so it requires us to go through these moments that completely strip us and prune us back and again, we don't always have to go through the total strip down, right? Like sometimes we get better and better at pruning the things that need to go. But sometimes it, it happens this way, right? And uh, sometimes it happens this way because we've been pushing and grinding and pride has gotten in and we've become unwise in our decisions. We got sidetracked. We got distracted. We started saying yes to the wrong things. We started living out of integrity, out of alignment for a little bit too long or a lot too long. And now everything is broken and falling apart. And to me, that's just a symptom, right? And so it is when I look back, I mean, the place that we got to in my family, obviously that wasn't me living out of alignment. I was a product of my parents' marriage and my father's choices, but that I was that was the environment that was created. I got to receive that, but that was a product of poor choices, misalignment, um, not being in integrity, and it ended up having a ripple effect on everyone around him, right? Same thing happened in the divorce. You know, our, unfortunately, our children became casualties of that too. We were misaligned. We didn't do the work to get the marriage right. Uh, we were young. We were not focused on the things that mattered most. We were controlled by family. We, you know, we just were not united. And so it was 10 years together, but the, the divorce point wasn't just like it happened overnight. It was years and years and years of unresolved conflict, unresolved conversations, things swept under the rug, living out of integrity, and eventually get to the point where the thing, the whole thing blows up. And everyone that's in your atmosphere is going to be affected by it in some way, shape, or form. That's part of the wisdom. That's part of the lesson. And it's a huge part of why I'm here today doing the work I do on healing relationships, restoring marriages and families, getting things back in the right order. Because I saw not only what I went through as a child, going through as a product of a broken marriage and addiction and striving and a, the addiction to success. But then as being a woman who was in a marriage that took my kids through that same thing, because I didn't get it. I didn't fully understand it. I didn't heal. And so we repeat what we experience. All of this to say that if you're in this moment, that things feel like they're being stripped down, I would encourage you to really lean in and say, okay, this is my surrender moment. First of all, you've got to let go. You can only do what you can do, right? You can only do what you can do. Be present where you're at. Show up for your family. You know, at the end of the day, they don't really care. They don't love you because of your job title. They don't love you because of your business. They want you. Most of the time, those things are actually taking you away from your family, right? They're competing with your family. 
our children want us, our spouses, they want us, they want our heart. Like that's God, he wants our heart. And when we go through these cycles, you know, again, you don't have to keep getting pruned down right down to the nub where there's nothing left. If you, if you gain wisdom along the way, right? If we catch the wisdom and we start leading from wisdom, we start leading by getting things in integrity. We start leading with moral courage, you know, uh, Proverbs 11, three and nine, when, when he's, we're given guidance on how to get back on the right path, you know, he says like lead with integrity, lead with moral courage, like to have the courage to do the right thing when everyone else is screaming the opposite moral courage, living in integrity instead of fragmented, like compromising your values, compromising your words, saying one thing, doing another, thinking one thing, doing another, like to be a man or woman of integrity and moral courage, that's some deep character, right? Lead with right standing with God. Like if I'm standing before God right now and God is always in us, like again, is there wholeness? Is there a oneness? Or do I feel like I need to run or hide some part of myself because I've got some shame about something? Like we know that we know if we're operating in a way that something is just not right in our soul. We know it's that we're not in right standing with our creator, with God's design for us. We just know it. You know it in the fabric of your soul and your being and your essence. And, you know, also lead with discernment, right? start to train yourself to be able to recognize what to do and when to do it, when it's time to move, when it's time to slow down. I was speaking to someone earlier that's like, I can't hear anything right now. Like I, I'm getting nothing but be still. And he was in full on panic mode. He was in full on panic mode. He's like, I'm not getting the answer I want. All I hear is be still, be still. And I said, well, that's the first step because you can't actually hear wisdom, direction, advice, and let alone have the courage, the faith to execute on it when you're in full on survival mode, like your physiology, your brain, your neural pathways, you it can't receive that. So what you got was correct. Be still is the correct first step. Calm down, get grounded, get centered, get quiet, be still. And then once you have that moment where you can breathe and you drop out of survival mode, you start to open yourself up. Now you're in a different you know, you're operating from a different state. You're operating not from your reptilian brain anymore, but you're more conscious, you're more aware, you're more open, you're more spiritually open and receptive, and you're no longer hijacked by a spirit of fear. So if you're in this moment of extreme pressure and extreme like a chokehold around you, then yes, the first step is you've got to be still. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am in control. Be still and know that I'm the one that owns everything under the sun. I know exactly what you need. I know exactly what I'm doing. I know exactly what I'm preparing you for. And we've got to be the ones that can be there with our body, like freaking out, right? Your visceral, your nervous system is going to be freaking out. Can I calm myself down? Can I self-soothe in this moment? Can I breathe? Can I go just be still in prayer? Can I go for a walk in the sunshine? Can I just, do I need to rest? You know, we, we get in these moments and we, we start getting frenetic and we're asking everyone for advice and we're, we're grasping and we're trying to figure things out and we're clawing and it just digs us further into the ground. It makes things way harder. It creates more, um, more strife, more stress, more bad decisions because you cannot lead and make good decisions from a place of fear, panic, and just having a noose around your neck. You just can't. So be still, number one. Secondly, know that this is a launching pad for the next season. I know it's really hard, but I bet that if you look back over your life, and I want you to do this exercise, just to look back over your life and think about, man, were there other times in my life where I thought this was it? Like it was all over. My life was over. I was never going to be able to get, survive this relationship or survive this situation. And like, did you pull through? What was on the other side? You know? Because I can tell you this, all the things that I was so terrified of losing, whether it was a home, whether it was a marriage, even a child, um, money, all the things that I was terrified of losing on the other side, on this side, have come back, have increased, have multiplied and come back into a right order. So that means like it have a healthy relationship with those things. It has opened the door for something new. Now I did get divorced. but 
that journey of going through that process, having to do my healing, doing the work relationally, internally, you know, brought me into the place where I'm able to have the marriage that I have today. So does that mean you're going to get your exact marriage back? I don't know. Does that mean you're going to get your business back? I don't know. You know, I'm doing a different business now. I am running a different business. My husband and I are building a different company now. We are doing different work today and it's way more life-giving. It's aligned. It's, it's fully yes. So if you could be in this moment and breathe and slow down and be still and know that you are not alone. And I just want to drop some words in here. You know, I love Deuteronomy 31 says, be strong, be courageous, do not be afraid or terrified because the Lord, your God goes with you. He goes with you wherever you are. When I was face down on the floor, when I was in those bathrooms crying out, like, I don't want to go on. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you in the moment. It feels like he has. Okay. I just want to be clear visually. Sometimes it feels like you're alone, but he's not there. Cause if you look back over your life, you can remember. In Psalms 71, 20 and 21, it says, though you may have made me see troubles, many troubles, bitter troubles, you will restore my life again from the depths of the earth. You bring me up. You increase my honor and you comfort me again and again and again. And so it has been in my life that I have been restored over and over and over again, renewed over and over and over again. I've been brought up over and over again and over again. And I've been comforted over and over again. And I think that there's this idea that we have that everything needs to just be in a straight line, upright, but life is a roller coaster, you guys. You know it's a you know it's a roller coaster. Entrepreneurship is a roller coaster. Sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low, sometimes it's twists and turns. We gotta get rid of this idea that it always has to be smooth sailing. And you know, we don't get to be a great sailor by always sa- sailing in the lagoons. We gotta get out there in the wide ocean where we can't see land. We've got to learn to navigate different waters, different storms, different seasons of life. That's what makes us weathered, right? That's what makes us master sailors. I love Isaiah 40, 31 that says those who hope in the Lord, not in themselves, will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles and they will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Come on now. And so this goes back to what I was saying earlier, when you're in those moments of crunch, you're putting so much pressure on yourself. Like I have to be the one to, to get these people out of this mess, to look after my family, to provide for everyone. If it's not me, then the world is over. These are the moments where we have to really trust in someone greater than us. I believe we got to place our trust in God, the one who knows us, the one who knows the plans he has for us, the one who has resources. And just like that, at any moment in time, he could drop something unexpected, unplanned right into our lap that we could not see coming. You know, Mark and I were on a, a walk or a run earlier today, and we were just talking about this, like, you can invest in properties, you can invest in portfolios, you can do all the right things in your business. You know, you can set um, projections, we can have projections and like the lay of the land and everything and we can have our plans. But one thing you can't uh, measure, one thing you can't predict, one thing you can't plan is divine favor. Divine favor, boom, just dropping into your life. Boom, a door opening out of nowhere, an opportunity dropping in that you had no idea was even in your realm of consciousness. You can't project that. You can't predict those things. Another thing you can't predict is boom, divine, you know, doors closing. (laughs) That all of a sudden you're like, everything was great. You know, we had this huge portfolio. What just happened? Everything just went belly up. There are some things we can do that are in our control. There's a lot of things that are not in our control. So this idea that I'm God and I create everything, like we can set our plans, we can make our predictions, we can set things in motions, we can forecast, but at the end of the day, we also need to realize that we are here to co-create. We are actually not in control. We have to release the control and be open to saying, God, you know what? Divine favor, divine opportunities, divine doors, opening, closing, divine moments, right? And, um, it is, it is so good when we get this because also then we realize, of course, to whom much is given, much is required. So if we have a team, we have people, we, we do have a responsibility to pay them, to look after them. 
But sometimes if, to, if we have to let people go, because that is the wise business decision to let people go or let people exit our life, or sometimes it's ending a relationship. The amount of times I hear people say, well, I can't, I feel bad. I feel bad. Like leaving that relationship, breaking up with that person, releasing that staff member, like what, what's going to happen to them? And I'm like, you're trying to play God over their life. What you're doing is you're releasing them for the job that is right for them. You're releasing them for the relationship that is right for them. Do you not think that God knows their address and he knows exactly <laughs> what they need? Maybe by us holding on to these people, to these things, we're actually holding them back. And so this has brought me a lot of freedom in my life, you know, a lot of liberation of that weight that's like, oh, I got to keep everybody here or else, you know, they're going to die. Because honestly, I don't have that much power. You do and you don't, right? And when we release someone, we can say, okay, I got to make sure that I'm in right standing. I'm operating in integrity. First and foremost, I'm operating in moral courage. And then I have to release the things that are, are taking me outside of that, right? So you can be hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. You can be perplexed, but not in despair. You can be persecuted, but not abandoned. You can be struck down, but not destroyed. And I want you to remember Romans 8, 28, that says all things, God in all things works, works all things for good for those of who love him who have been called according to his purpose. So whatever squeezing you're going through, whatever pressing you're going through, whatever thing feels like, oh, he's, he's going to use it for good if you get your heart in the right place. If you get your heart in the right place, he will use all things for good. And out of the dust of the ashes, right, out of the ashes of our past, we, it, we use it as foundational building blocks for something new and beautiful. I was going on a walk yesterday and I was talking to one of my clients and I was, uh, so I love doing my coaching calls while we're on walks and talks. And sometimes it's something we do. We just spent the first bit of our call, you know, going through some of her wins and she had gone through a massive pressing, you know, like a massive pressing, been wounded up for, from a lot of years of abuse when she was younger, uh, broken relationships, abandonment from her family was just really closed down and resistant to men, resistant to me women, uh, just a warrior across the board, beautiful woman, making lots of money, really successful in business, but really, really struggling inside to feel worthy of love, worthy of, of a man who loves her, worthy of just having a life that, you know, she can relax a little bit. And it was just so beautiful to go for a walk yesterday and, and hear her say, you know what, I am softer now on the other side. Like when, when we started this work, she was just, it was a hot mess for a while. She thought everything was just crumbling down and she just was so exhausted. She didn't want to go another day. And she was just like, it's been such a humbling journey. Christine it has been such a humbling journey, but today I'm softer. I'm releasing so many of those heavy expectations that I had on myself, the whip I constantly had on myself and everyone else. I know how to calm myself down. I can hear other people completely different. You know, I have friendships with women that I never would have had before because I just didn't trust anyone. And I feel so much lighter from not being on high alert all the time. And the beautiful thing is, you know, there's many great things happening in her business life now that are birthing relationships that are birthing new relationships with her daughter that are birthing new way of looking at herself. And she told me yesterday, you know, this is the first time I think ever where I finally feel worthy and deserving of really a beautiful relationship. Not only do I feel worthy of it, but that I actually believe it could be possible for me. And I thought, man, that is such a win. That is such a win. If nothing like that is, that's everything, right? To get to the place where, you know, it was all worth it. It was all worth it. And I'm so glad I went through that pressing, through that squeezing, through that trial, because I'm finally getting to the place where I'm willing to say yes, where I'm open to saying yes, and I can trust on a whole different level. So I'm going to end where I started. I don't know who needs to hear this message today. But you are so much more than what's happening in your external world. You're more than your business name. You're more than the assets you've accumulated. You're more than the things in your life. You're even more than the relationships. You are a man or woman that is cherished, that's deeply held, that was created on purpose. And all of these things have been added unto you as vehicles, roles, you know, uh, 
ways for you to express who you are in this world, right? For you to express love, for you to express joy, for you to experience uh, a life that, that really reflects God, right? And if we stay focused on those things and we're not so freaked out when things come into our life or sometimes when things get reorganized, sometimes when we get called into seasons where we need to grow up emotionally, spiritually, in our character so that we can be better equipped to handle more of what God has for you. So you guys, I want to know, hopefully this spoke into somebody's life. Um, I just want you to remember that we are always moving through stages. We are always evolving. We are always going through deaths and rebirths. We are always going through pruning and flourishing because, you know, the, the fruit's getting better. The fruit's getting better. You got to, you got to cut back. You know, there's going to be winter seasons. There's going to be spring seasons. There's going to be summer seasons. We're cyclical in nature. We're organic beings. We're not factories. We're not designed to be moving on a linear line, always producing, always putting out, always performing at our peak. We're seasonal. We're cyclical. We're relational beings. We're so much more than the external. Internally, you are one with God. You are an heir to the kingdom of God. You are a son and a daughter of the most high. Isn't that amazing? So you guys, hopefully this hit home, pierced some hearts, spoke some life back into you. I'm going to drop some of those uh, verses below because I thought they were just so awesome. And uh, I want to encourage you that great things are on the other side. Be still and know that you are not alone. Be still and know that this is just the beginning of the next beautiful season. Bye for now.